Hi guys and welcome back to this week's episode of The Sick Sexy. If you're new to the podcast, hi, my name is Sophia. I post once a week about all things invisible illness, health, dating, and I get to talk to some pretty amazing humans along the way. In this week's episode, I wanted to sit down and have a bit of a heart to heart because it's been a few months since we did the last one and so much has happened. Um, But I wanted to talk specifically today about my experience in the music industry and in the music world after having a stroke. It's no surprise to my, my nearest and dearest that music has been a massive part of my life since I could walk and talk. My dad was a professional musician and so I grew up around a lot of jazz and blues influences. And when I got sick and suffered my brain injury, I was really terrified that I would never get to experience music the same way. I remember like early on, I sat down with my doctors and out of the checklist of things that I really wanted to accomplish, and this was things like, you know, I want to get back to exercising and I want to go back to work and I want to do all these things that make me who I am, one of the first questions I asked was, am I going to be able to go and see a live music show? Am I going to be able to go to a gig? And I remember at the time the doctors were kind of hesitant to give me an answer because they were like, well, we don't know how your stroke is going to affect um, like your ability to deal with sensory information in your environment. So we can't really give you an answer. And they said, look, things like strobe lights and um, loud noises might trigger a seizure, we don't know. And so there was a lot of kind of hesitancy and fear around that. But at the same time, early on in my recovery, music was such an integral part of why I am here today and why I can speak with as much clarity as I do and why I um, am just have a really positive outlook on life because for the month period that I was in hospital, I was singing every day to the point that like nurses would come and stand by the door and listen to me and like I remember this one um, this one patient next door to me he would have his family come and visit and he had this one uncle who would stop past my door and literally be like what are you singing today Soph like I became known as like the the person um, in hospital that would sing so music for me has always been an integral part of my healing journey and so it was really important for me to try to go back into that scene because it's it means so much to me so I wanted to talk to you guys this week about like what that looks like after a brain injury some of the things that I've learned and I learned pretty early on about how to look after your ears when you're in a loud environment um, because I think something that people who haven't suffered a brain injury what they don't understand is that Um, a normal brain can kind of filter out background noises but the way like I describe my brain and the way my occupational therapist describes my brain is that it's a bit like a broken strainer so it's like noise and sound and um, environmental stuff goes in and my brain just can't filter it out quickly enough so I get very disorientated very quickly so my first experience was um, I decided to go back to like my favorite blues bar and um, at the time I think I wore earplugs and I decided to go with someone because my concern was that if I were to have a fall or get really dizzy at least someone would be there Um, and it was a positive experience Um, I tolerated it really well I had my earplugs in I could listen to the music my favorite blues bar happens to me be very dark um, and so I wasn't really concerned about like the lights affecting me. Um, So that was really positive. But then I noticed the next day when I had like recovered, the way I describe my brain injury is it's sort of like a hangover. So it's like when you go out drinking, your body takes a while to recover the next day. And for me, my body was just like covered in hives and I had a migraine and I had ringing ears. And that was all, they're all symptoms of when I'm overstimulated. So I could tell that in that environment the music was had had that impact on me but because I love it so much I'm like I don't care we're gonna do this again and so my second biggest experience with live music was just recently actually I went to see a live concert with my dad and I'll never forget it it was I don't think dad realized the significance of what it meant to me that we were going to see this live production 
in a pretty big entertainment centre and I hadn't factored in or prepared for the lights. So there was lots of like flashing lights. Pick up this little monkey because he was being a pain. Um, where were we? Yeah, so I don't think my dad was properly prepared for the significance of like what this meant to me. And I remember sitting there, we were front row as well. And I remember sitting there and being like, I started to freak out a little bit because I was like, as soon as those strobe lights and flashing lights hit me, I'm very photosensitive. And it happens with like movies. If there's like bright flashes, like something happens to my brain, I just can't tolerate it. So when the band started, the lights started strobing and I just looked down and I closed my eyes instinctively. I was like, no, nah, we're not doing this. I'm closing my eyes. And I remember in the first intermission, I got up and I said to my dad, I'm going to go get us a glass, you know, get us a drink. I'm going to get you a, a beer. I'm going to get some water. And it was the most terrifying experience because it took me back to being in hospital. And for anyone that has suffered a traumatic brain injury, you'll know when I say like everyone's symptoms are different. With my particular stroke, it really affected my balance and my ability to know where I was in space. So when I would look down, it felt like, you know, when you're a kid, you'd play like the floor is lava and like you'd have to like jump off the ground. That's how it felt for me. Like it felt like, it felt like I was on drugs and everything was moving basically. Now I've never been on drugs, but I have been incredibly drunk in my youth and teenhood and that's what it felt like and when I was like recovering in hospital I experienced that I experienced like feeling like you're in a really dangerous vehicle that you can't get out of and that's how I explain a brain injury it feels like you're trapped inside a moving train that's off the rails and you can't get out like physically speaking so I remember kind of and I was wearing heels at the time I remember like stumbling my way through to the bar and I always like the funny thing is like there's these t-shirts on the internet that say I'm not drunk I've had a stroke and I'm so tempted to buy one because in that moment I did look like I had been drinking too much and I remember I got to the bar and I was coherent enough to order whatever I don't actually remember carrying the drinks back to dad but obviously I did um but I threw up I threw up in intermission because it was too much sense, like sensory overload for my brain. Like I just couldn't handle it. Um, and then, yeah, we had the rest of the show. The show was, I think, like two hours. So I was struggling by the end. PSA, the music was amazing. Like we had such a good time and we were singing along and stuff. But that was a big, big step for me. And you learn from your mistakes. And I think number one mistake I made was not taking earplugs with me. I don't know why. But I decided like, oh, it's not going to be a big gig. It's going to be fine. And then I quickly realized that in that kind of environment, whether you have a normal brain or not, you probably should have like ear protection. So for anyone that is going to a music gig or a live show, and if music's a big part of your life and you're scared that like it's going to trigger your stroke symptoms, I would encourage you to take ear protection as number one. Um, my friend Jo recommended loop earbuds. They're amazing. They're available on the internet. I will link them down below. Um, but they're fantastic and I just ordered a second pair because I'm like, I'm not going to do this to myself again. It's not worth the symptoms that I get. And then the second thing that I would recommend is just to pace yourself. Um, so like just make sure that you go with someone. Make sure that you're, yeah, I would, I would encourage you not to if you're going to music for the first time after having a brain injury, make sure you take someone with you. That's probably, that should have been tip number one, to be honest, because the thought of like going to a music festival or a live show on your own anyway is a bit like intimidating. But when you've had a brain injury, it's like, it's that extra layer of like, oh my God, where is everything? Because I think for me, it was about coordinating my surroundings and not knowing where anything was. So I really struggled with that. Um... But I guess the silver lining to this story in particular is that after I had that experience, I was like, okay, well, how can we mitigate these risk factors from happening next time? And so, yes, I invested in really good ear pods. Um, and now, like, whenever I go to a, a music gig, I'll make sure it's somewhere where it's dimly lit. So no strobe lights. I try and avoid anything with, like, strobes or, like, light flashes. Um, I guess similar to a way that someone with epilepsy might avoid that kind of thing because it might trigger a seizure. 
Um, but music is such a big part of my life and I've actually recently started getting back into singing in a professional sense. So it was really important for me to find ways to do that, that feel right for me and that I can still enjoy it. Um, so I'm really happy to say that I have started like singing professionally again with other people, which is amazing. Um, and it just means I, I take those little, like, you know, little, what do you even call them? Like, I am just a little bit more conscious of, you know, how am I getting there? What earpods am I wearing? Um, are, do, are we having breaks? Is there an opportunity for me to step away from the lights and sounds and just have a moment? Because I think even after, you know, after a stroke, even in any environment where there's a lot of people, you start to become overly stimulated and exhausted. So even without music, if there's like seven people and they're all having a conversation with each other and with me it becomes quite mentally taxing for me um and so i do need that moment to step out and be like okay guys time out like i need a minute to like decompress and come down because i'm just not coping um and that's just a part of brain injury management uh which is something they don't teach you when you come out of hospital so hopefully some of these tips will be helpful for you guys today um i've been seeing your comments roll in every day and i'm just yeah so grateful to have this community of not not even just brain injury survivors but people living with invisible illness and going on their own journey it's something that we don't speak about enough and i've said this for years and i could go on and on about it but Talking about your experiences and sharing your story really does help the next person. And honestly, if you have your own experience with how you cope after a brain injury, going to see your favorite live music, hit us up in the comments. I think ultimately it comes down to not pushing your body and not pushing your brain in those circumstances. And really just doing what feels right. Like if it's no longer appropriate to go to a, a hardcore metal band in a mosh pit, don't do that. But like, don't stop doing the things you love because you don't think you can do them anymore. You absolutely can, I'm proof of that. Um, and music is such a big part of my life and will continue to be a big part of my life. So guys, if you enjoyed this week's episode of The Six Sexy, please hit us up in the comments down below. Like this episode on Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. And until next time, I will see you back here on the couch on The Six Sexy. Bye.